Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. We've decided to do a little series for the end of the year where we discuss some of our highlighted projects. That includes the music video for our friend Jack Anthony and his new music video that we covered a few months ago. The first music video that we did for him this year was for On My Own and that was, I think, April? March? Yeah, I don't know, it was much earlier in the year and that was a really fun one. We'll insert some little clips and everything about that one but we thought we'd talk a little bit more about the second music video we did in August, Call My Name. My baby's come for the weekend I sit in silence, I play for dead And how you make your break my For each video in this series, we'll be breaking it into three parts. Pre-production, production and post-production. We will have all the chapter selects down below so you can skip to the part that interests you the most about our process and how we work. He reached out to us for Call My Name around the start of August, just before the start of August. And we actually had our first meeting about it in Adelaide, staying at one of our friends' house. And that blossomed into a music video we then filmed two days later. Once we got back to Sydney. Once we got back to Sydney, I think it was a Tuesday night. Prepped everything, Jack got himself props for the video, cassette player, all of that. Number one thing was the colour theory of it all, making mm -hmm. sure that everyone's colours and stuff coordinated with a colour palette that we mm -hmm. were going to go for in the edit. Yeah. So that was a lot of earthy tones, the mm -hmm. greens. Greens, or oranges, oranges, blacks, blacks browns. browns, all of that. Probably one of the biggest lessons we learnt this year was colour theory. Biggest thing that we can say is that is a shortcut to anything cinematic is colour theory. So quick breakdown, you want majority of your image to be one colour, about 20% to be a different colour and then a small 5-10% can be a third colour. Mm -hmm. And that will get you a really good consistent colour palette which you can either apply to all of your work so that people can recognise it as yours or on a project by project basis, which is more what we go for. Yep. Onto the actual production of the music video. Uh, we had, again, a rough plan from Adelaide. Mm -hmm. We went to sort of start and straight away we noticed what was in it, all of our heads wasn't really working. Yeah, it wasn't completely translating as easy and fluently as we expected it to. Yeah, what ended up happening was us trying different things, it not working, us talking with our friend Madison and Jack and sort of coming up with ideas on the spot. But the irony is, is that you know the words, we know like the you're lyrics. sort of saying the words a little bit more and you're like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, because not... Yeah, yeah. Okay, do they need to know the words? No, the they just got to be yeah. vibing. Alright, so you guys will just be vibing out sort of thing. Um, you guys interacting with each other. Like literally anything, like you could be like doing hand games, whatever. Yeah. yeah okay, How's cool. That that's something that makes you a really good creative is being a professional problem solver mm -hmm. because nothing will ever go according to plan Never. it will go, you might get lucky and it will go 70 percent 80 percent to plan but, but there's always, always something, something that, that you can't you... account for yeah weather location people so anything you could think of so for this specifically the problems we we're running into was the 180 degree rule mm -hmm. making sure everyone's flowing from one side to the other so that the music video has a narrative through line yeah the other thing that wasn't working is a few ideas that we had relied on the fact that the people in the music video had to know the song and unfortunately because of such the short notice short that it was notice. technically an unreleased song they didn't know the song yeah. so they were all pulled together and they huddled up and they tried they had to one the sheet song. of paper and they were going for it and they're just repeating the lines over and over again and it was funny if we were mm. also trying to stress out thinking about what shots and angles to go for because, not breaking any of the yeah. 180 rules or anything like that and i feel like an important note to mention was the reason why this was so rushed was jack had a deadline for the video to be handed in by yeah so usually we would have a little bit dedicate a little bit more time to avoiding any scenarios like this. Again, like we said, <laughs> shit always happens. Pretty much. <laughs> this time we were under a bit more of a time crunch, so it was kind of like make a plan, get it done, mm. work with what we get sort of thing. And that's also something that you really should take away from is that sometimes you don't have the luxury of the prep time, so you just gotta make do with it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that forces you into learning more about your craft and, and how to navigate those situations. Yeah. So we came away from the actual shoot being pretty all right, pretty happy-ish mm -hmm. with the footage. Because we had a plan 
over the lyric sheet. We had, we were trying to avoid filming too much because we wanted to know what it was going to look like by the end. So we had our notes written on a sheet of paper over the lyrics. This shot for this, this shot for this line, this for this section. And we went off of that as much as we could. So now we're going to quickly talk about our gear. We shot with the Sony a7 III on mm -hmm. our Crane 3S Zhiyun gimbal. Mm -hmm. We also had the Ninja 5 Atomos monitor on top. We usually try to use the footage inside the Ninja, the DNX HR, just because it's easier on the PC in post-production because it doesn't have to decrypt H.264. Mm -hmm. And plus what we normally do is once a project is like 100% done, we transcode the DNX back to an MP4 H.264 for like long-term storage. Mm. We chose to film at sunset and that already elevates the production quality just a little bit because that light that's coming yeah. through, it just automatically processes in your brain as cinematic. Yeah. Now, now to post-production. So we started the edits and as we began putting everything together, we felt like it wasn't working and that started to stress us out because we had this plan we'd thought it out we'd planned it out and filmed it all spent a whole night shooting with like eight or ten different people and we're thinking are we gonna have to come up with a new concept and refilm this because it just it didn't hit we did go kind of hard on ourselves and that does happen but mm. um once we you know had had the night to just chill not think about it. The following morning, went back in, basically copied the timeline, so created two different timelines, mm -hmm. and then hacked away at it. Yep. Literally just kind of the plan that we had of, you know, we'll do this shot, then this shot, that went out the window. Yeah. We it was just, this is the footage we have. What can we do with it? Just make it look cool. Mm -hmm. Screw the storyline, yeah. just do that. And that's where we notice more things like, oh yeah, we did sort of mess up on this 180 line that he's traveling the wrong way. We want him to go this way. And it was a lot of fiddling around. But when it came to that 180 thing, all we do is we just flipped up horizontally. Yeah. The only thing that was different was the audio jack on the headphone was on this side. Mm -hmm. When it was flipped, it was obviously on the other. But it's one of those things that's that one of those like, things that don't I don't even it. think I really noticed that. No one notices that. Yeah. You, you will notice it because you have the raw footage. Exactly. But the rest of the world won't ever have that. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to little things like that, don't sweat it. If you broke the 180 mm -hmm. and you can flip it, and it's, for example, like Jack here was wearing like a checkered pattern, they're not going to notice. Yeah. If you have a big label, like say a Nike label and it flips, obviously that's a problem. Yeah. But when they're wearing base colors, don't worry about it, just flip it. Also give yourself that leeway of... If you know if what you can do, then you can balance it out and fix whatever you have to. And then that's when we found this, that at the end, a cohesive video is what sells, mm -hmm. not so much the plan. So flipping it, making sure 180, it was a narrative through line. Mm -hmm. It just ended up working and... Mm -hmm. And the color grade. The color grade as mm -hmm. well. The colors and stuff, as much as we stuck to color theory, because we filmed in sunset, then right after the sun had just gone down, mm -hmm. then at night, then with LEDs, mm -hmm. even though they were roughly the oranges, the greens and stuff like that, that was there, but the intensity of them varied quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So then what we ended up doing was stripping back our color grade just to a base correction. And then what we did is we put Dehancer on top. Dehancer is a film emulation that allows you to source different types of film stock, put it over the top. And the best thing is you can control the levels mm -hmm. of that emulation. If you want grain, put it in. If you don't, you don't have to. Uh, bloom, halation, all yeah. of that. You can control the levels. It's amazing. And what it does is it's super glue for the entire project. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're interested in trying Dehancer, you can use our code right here to save yourself a bit of money at checkout. Shout out to Dehancer. We're not sponsored by them, but we do love their product and we really highly recommend it. We mm -hmm. use it on every single project. Literally. You can use it without using the film emulation stuff if you want to, mm -hmm. just the look of Kodak or Fuji or yeah. whatever. But essentially at the end of the day, you want your client to be happy. So what we did was hacked away at it. We even discuss the option of a new concept and a new film day and everything yeah. but we also kind of didn't really want to have to do that because we felt guilty about the work that we'd already put in that was a really fun shoot at the end of the day having all those people come out yeah. and stuff like that so we waited until we had a version 
that we were much happier with sent it to Jack and Sophie, who's his sister and also does backing vocals in the song, and they loved it. They were so happy with it. They enjoyed it. They thought it was perfect. And we just said, okay. If you're happy, if we're you're happy. If you're happy, then I think we're also happy and we can give it to you for whenever you're ready to release it out into the world. That also helps you see maybe the beauty in something that you didn't. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of our favorite projects that we've done now. And, and the reason why we're making this video because it's one of the highlights of the year. Your takeaway from this should be that Nothing will ever go according to plan. Always be prepared to pivot. Mm -hmm. And when you feel like it's all going wrong, take a step back, take a break if you can. Take, take the day, take the night, go yeah. play games, go to gym, go do whatever. Get your mind off of it completely and then return to it with fresh eyes and a fresh mindset. And don't be afraid to throw out the plan even in the edit. Mm -hmm. If you thought it was going to be this way, just throw it out. Make a copy of the timeline and just hack away. Mm -hmm. See what happens. Alright, well, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this little BTS director's discussion video and we'll see you for the next one. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Do all the things. Do all the things uh, so that you will get notified for our next retrospective yep. of one of our projects for this year. Take care guys. Happy holidays. See ya.